So we know living things need energy and we know why. We know that glucose is a really important molecule because of its energy storing capabilities and we know that it gets produced in photosynthesis. The next question is, what is aerobic respiration? Let's find out. First thing we need to do is clarify that when we're talking about aerobic respiration, we're talking about something called cellular respiration. Here's a eukaryotic cell bringing in some glucose and carrying out cellular respiration. It sometimes gets confused with breathing. The term respiration is often associated with breathing. We are not talking about breathing, no. We are talking about cellular respiration in this lesson. So in the What is Photosynthesis video, we looked at how autotrophs make glucose. They make it using carbon dioxide and water, and they produce sugar, which is the glucose. Let's just put glucose there as a label, and oxygen. Now to do that, they use light energy, which usually comes from sunlight. So this process of photosynthesis and producing glucose is carried out by autotrophs. Common examples of autotrophs are plants. And here's our glucose molecule here. So the special thing about autotrophs is that they're able to make glucose themselves from simple inorganic substances like carbon dioxide and water. They make glucose because they use it as a source of energy. In fact, pretty much all organisms use glucose as a source of energy. So autotrophs are able to make glucose themselves, whereas heterotrophs are not. So let's just remind ourselves of heterotrophs. So the snail that we looked at before, the lizard eating the snail, and the kookaburra eating the lizard. They are examples of heterotrophs because they can't make their own glucose. They need to obtain glucose by consuming or eating or taking in other organisms or their products. And the important thing to remember is that that's why we call autotrophs producers because they produce glucose for the rest of the food chain. But remember, they're not doing it for the consumers, the heterotrophs. They're making the glucose for themselves as their own source of energy. So right, we know where glucose comes from. Autotrophs make it, heterotrophs consume other organisms to get it. Cellular respiration is where energy-rich organic molecules, usually glucose, are broken down to lower energy products to release energy. So essentially, cellular respiration is where we're breaking down the glucose to release the energy contained within it. Here's a graph here showing you an idea of what's happening in cellular respiration. Free energy here and during the course of the reaction, we've got the reactants at the beginning have this much energy. The products at the end have a low amount of energy, which means that after the reaction, this much energy is released and can then be used for other processes. What we call this type of reaction is an exothermic reaction because energy is exiting the reaction. Energy is given off. It's the opposite to an endothermic reaction which requires energy. Cellular respiration is an example of an exothermic reaction. The reactants have more energy than the products. The reactants are glucose. When we break down glucose, we give off a whole heap of energy that can be used. So aerobic respiration is a type of cellular respiration where the breakdown of glucose uses oxygen. So we'll bring in some oxygen molecules here to remind ourselves. In aerobic respiration, the breakdown of glucose uses oxygen. The way that I remember that is I think aerobic. Think of the air, the air is full of oxygen, 
and that reminds me that aerobic respiration is the breakdown of glucose using oxygen. So aerobic respiration occurs inside of cells. The first part of aerobic respiration is called glycolysis and that happens just in the cytoplasm. As we know, in eukaryotic cells, the latter stages of aerobic respiration occur in this organelle here, which we call the mitochondrion. The plural term for, the, for them is mitochondria. Here's a mitochondrion. This is where the latter stages of aerobic respiration occur, also known as the Krebs cycle. Let's have a look at a summary of the chemical equation for aerobic respiration. Glucose is broken down in the presence of oxygen and we produce carbon dioxide and water and, because it's exothermic, energy is released. Looking at the chemical equation for that, glucose, which is C6H12O6 plus oxygen, six molecules of oxygen, so 6O2, gives us carbon dioxide, six molecules of carbon dioxide, so 6CO2, plus water, six molecules of water, so 6H2O, plus energy. Just bring energy down here. We can never leave off that energy. It's actually the most important part because remember, the purpose for breaking down glucose in respiration is to release energy that can be harnessed by the cell. So there's our summary of a balanced chemical equation. Remember, it's glucose plus, just get rid of that, glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide, water, and of course, energy, which is then harnessed by the cell. Notice that this, even though this is just a summary of what happens in aerobic respiration, it actually appears to be the exact reverse of what we see in photosynthesis. Because remember in photosynthesis, it's 6H2O plus 6CO2, which gives C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Carbon dioxide and water makes glucose and oxygen. And that's a handy way to remember this balanced equation, is the, the aerobic respiration balanced equation is the reverse equation to photosynthesis. But I've really got to make it clear that they're not reverse processes. They're very complex processes and are totally different. This is just a summary of what happens overall in aerobic respiration. And same thing with photosynthesis. Remember that photosynthesis was endothermic. It required energy in the form of light energy to take place, and it required that. Whereas aerobic respiration is exothermic, it gives off energy, and that energy is used by the cell. So the energy that's produced by aerobic respiration then fuels the ATP cycle. ATP is an energy storing molecule that is used by cells. If you want to find out more about the ATP cycle, check out the video called What is the ATP Cycle? But put simply, the energy from respiration is used to add a phosphate back onto ADP and make ATP again. And then the energy from the ATP cycle is used by the cell for the cell's work. So that's been aerobic respiration. There's another type of cellular respiration which is called fermentation or anaerobic respiration. It's called anaerobic because it happens when there is no oxygen available. It's still the breakdown of glucose, but it's the breakdown of glucose with no oxygen. To find out more about this process, check out the video called What is Fermentation or Anaerobic Respiration. So hopefully this lesson has helped you to understand aerobic respiration. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. In all of my videos, I use information and material from the Biology Levels of Life textbook, workbook and teaching notes. If you want any information on how to get hold of these, just leave a comment below 
or email me on jeremy.s.lacornu at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on my new videos. And as always, thanks so much for your support and positive feedback. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you.